Amalgamated Motors went up two points today. I'm out of the market. You're smart. What's the use? I made $90,000 from the oil well last year. What did I end up with? Taxes. Got to support the government. Yeah. Buy them deep good Indian necklace, boss. Why, you ornery ding-dong, no good Indians? I told you... You're giving the town a bad name. U-G-H, Og. Sitting out here selling necklaces. The two richest men in the state. You got more than we got. Okay, then, two of the richest men in the state. Sitting out here in them feathers and moccasins. Where are you going, Sam? Going to Massachusetts to visit my granddaughter. Used to be my great, great grandfather's summer place. What did? Massachusetts. We sold it to you folks. Cost too much to keep up. Hello, Johnny. Hello, Big Mouth. Will you send me the bull when you get it all whittled out, huh, Big Mouth, huh? Johnny, how many times have I told you not to call your grandfather that awful name? What's wrong with Big Mouth? The Indians gave me that name because I could bellow louder than any buck in the tribe. Big Mouth, good strong name. Ah, don't give me that cigar store Indian broken head. Sorry, Keith, it slipped. That's all right. Oh, by the way, thanks for that check to the hospital fund. 10,000 was a really generous contribution. You gave 10? Sure. I give 10. My secretary sends you check in the morning. Thanks, running dear. Ding dong, and now I've got to give 20. That's what I figure. Papa, what does ding dong it mean? It's a word I'm sad to reduce to by your mom. There comes my ding dong train now. It's about time too. I'm here. Where's it been? Now don't anybody get excited. I'm just going to Massachusetts to visit my granddaughter. And I don't want anybody to make a fuss. Grandpa, don't shout. Who's shouting? Running there. Get my grip out of the car, will you? What's it worth to you? Stupid! Okay. Now, Johnny, I want you to be a good boy and take real good care of your ma. Big Mouth, you have spoken the law. Ding dong Indian. He needs two bits like he needs a hole in his blanket. Oh, Grandpa, you're not gonna take that old sack. Now, Kate, don't make a fuss. I've traveled with this thing too long to make a change now. But you promised me you'd take the suitcase. I said I'd bring it to the depot and that's as far as it's going. Oh, Sam, you are the most aggravating I'm man I'm afraid I... I am. That's what your grandma always said. Oh, here's my train now. Goodbye, everybody. Bye, Bye. Big Mouth. Bye. Here you are, Porter. Now, Katie. Don't you and Johnny worry about me. I'll be all right. Uh, send your postcard as soon as you get there. <laughs> and I'll have the boat ready for Johnny. Goodbye now. Take care of yourselves. Big mouth. <laughs> have a Johnny Bean. No, thank you. I'm going to Pilgrim Hill Mash. Are you? Yep, Pilgrim Hill Mash. My little granddaughter lives there. Indeed. A fellow named Jonathan Smith seems to be the big noise in Pilgrim Hill. Runs the whole place. Ever hear of him? No. Yeah. Seems to be Smith that's making my little granddaughter unhappy. She's married to a real nice young fellow. <laughs> Tom Adams, lawyer. Hey, are you listening? Oh, yes. That's what I'm going east to straighten out. Who does this Jonathan Smith think he is? Making my little granddaughter unhappy. I'll tell him where to get off. I can tell you that right now. I've got to say I ain't a normal. Oh, no. Well, I don't want to talk you to death anyway. I'll just relax and figure out tomorrow's plans. I think so. You think you'll recognize him? Oh, after all, it's only been four years. And people who've met Grandfather even for two seconds never forget him. Impressive, eh? That's the general idea I got of him. Look, uh, Tom, Sam's a darling, and I do love him, but, well, Eastern people might not understand him. Oh, people are people. Oh, but Sam's pretty special. We'll give him full honor. What do you mean? He's going to get the full A number one treatment. 
Tom, what do you mean? Jonathan, the great Smith, is going to be on hand. Oh, no. I thought that'd surprise you. Oh, it's curious the effect that the first man in a woman's life has on her. Even now, I still love you. What's the matter, dear? Tom, you were kidding, weren't you? Jonathan Smith isn't really going to be here. Well, of course he is. Well, head him off, trip him, anything. Only keep him off this platform until we get Sam home. Janet, have you gone mad? Look, Tom, trains excite Sam. He's still calling them the Iron Horse. <laughs> You're exaggerating. You'll see, you and Mr. Interfering Smith. Shh. Somebody might hear you. Well, I don't care if they do. Whose idea was it that he should be here? Why, Mr. Smith offered. Exactly. Coming down to look my grandfather over. Well, I can hardly tell my most important client. Your not... most important client. The way you and the rest of the people in this town bow down to Jonathan Smith is positively sickening. Now, how did we get started on this? Because people excite Sam. People excite Sam. Trains excite Sam. What? What doesn't excite Sam? You know, I can't think of a single thing. Morning, Adams. <clears throat> Janet, my dear. Good morning, Mr. Smith. Morning. Oh, young lady, I suppose you're very happy. Oh, very. It always gives me great pleasure to receive a newcomer into our peaceful cultural surroundings here at Pilgrim Hill, especially my own attorney's family. It was good of you to come down, sir. Oh, we do what we can. We do what we can. <laughs> very accurate. Presented to me by John Ellsworth. You know he was my attorney for many years. Splendid attorney. So very grateful. Stand back, stand back, my dear. Uh, Adam, perhaps you'd better stand on the side of me. But Mr. Jonathan Smith insists that we enforce the rules within the incorporated village of Pilgrim Hill. Pilgrim Hill. Pilgrim Hill. Way for two bits out by this ding dong railroad. I tear up the tracks and I'd run it around to town. Jenna! Baby! That is your grandfather. Here, sir. Take care of that. And be sure this fellow don't chisel some of that away from you. <laughs> Grandpa! <laughs> Honey girl, you've grown into the prettiest thing I've ever seen. Anyway, how... Here, Bob. Take care of them things. <laughs> Bring your butler down to the depot just to impress your old grandpappy, eh? <laughs> That's pretty good. This must be Tom. Yep, I recognize you from your picture. Son, I'm mighty happy to meet you. Well, what are you standing there for, Bob? Get them things out the car. Sam, this is Mr. Jock. Son, you never call a butler mister. It's either Jeeves or Metters or whatever his handle is. And look at my little girl. <laughs> Anything cooking, honey? You figuring on making me a great grandpappy real soon? Sir, I am. You don't have to serve me, bub. It's plain Sam Smedley or Big Mouth, if you're part Indian. Come on, honey, let's get out of here. You can't hang around the depot all day. Well, hop that bag along, bub. We ain't got all day. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Smith. Uh, I'm sure he'll apologize when he realizes... Go! Go! <laughs> what are you laughing at? I'm laughing at him. I'm laughing at you, too. <laughs> You're all right, son. Let's get out of here. Hey, what happened to that butler fella? You make him walk, eh? 
Sam, darling, that wasn't the butler. That was Mr. Jonathan Huntoon Smith. <laughs> you know, I kind of figured out that's who it was. You knew? Sure. Always believed in getting in the first blow. Ah, have some jelly beans? Good heavens, no. Well, say, honey, this is, uh, this is Jim Dandy. Yes, sir. A little cramped, but not bad. Uh, fella couldn't do much of his rope throwing in here. This house happens to be 150 years old. Oh, you don't need to apologize about that to me, son. It's a roof over your head, ain't it? I think I'd better go see Mr. Smith. He's also our neighbor. Lives right next door. Oh, you don't have to worry about him, son. We'll eliminate him in good time. You know, Janet, I ain't had a wink of sleep in two nights. Oh, you poor thing. Couldn't you get a berth? Can't play poker in a berth. Oh. On the train, I met some fellas who'd invented a new way of dealing from the bottom. That is, they thought they'd invented a new way of dealing from the bottom. <laughs> they found out. Well, I'll just stretch down here on the couch and grab off 40 winks. But don't you want to go to your room? What for? I ain't been bad, have I? Uh. <laughs> no, honey, you just go ahead, whatever you expect to do, and I'll stretch down here and dope out some plans. All right. I'll be all right. Janet. Yes, Sam? Come here and sit down with your granddaddy. What's the trouble, daughter? That big ox been mistreating you? Of course not. Well, your letters to Catherine don't sound like a happy girl. What is it? Oh, I don't know. Everything, I guess. Smith? Partly. Oh, Sam, no woman likes to see her husband cater to another man, no matter how rich he is. No. Say, who is that young fellow at the depot? The one who's doing all the laughing. Oh, Steve Terhune. He does odd jobs, repairs. He's a good mechanic, too, but nobody will trade with him anymore. Why not? Mr. Smith doesn't like him. You see, he's in love with Debbie, Smith's daughter. Uh-huh. The boy makes an honest living, don't he? Sure. You know, honey, I'm beginning to think I don't like this Mr. Smith. Oh, now, Sam, please now, don't... Now, granddaughter, do... don't you go trying to teach your old granddaddy to suck eggs. Though just why anyone would want to teach a nice old gentleman like me such a revolting habit... <laughs> it's something I've never been able to find out. <laughs> and, uh... Don't ever do that again. Sorry, son. You're doing it wrong. Yeah. Ain't your fault, though. Club's bad to balance. Tell that just by looking at it. Perhaps you'd care to show me how to drive a golf ball. Why, sure. Golf isn't as easy as it looks. It's all a matter of concentration. You keep your left arm straight, swing back slowly, Shift your weight, and then snap the wrist at the moment of impact. Uh, I used to hit the ball, ain't it? Yeah, hit it as far as you can. All right, son, just stand aside. Great scout, right through the canvas. I'm sorry, son, I held back, but not enough, I guess. I'll fix that hole first chance you get. She landed yet? Clear over to Smith's and still on the carry. You stay here, I'll go fetch it. No, you can't do that. Why not? Well, that's Mr. Smith's property. No one's allowed on there without permission. He's kind of a snob, ain't he? Well, I don't think so. No, you wouldn't. Because if you don't watch your step, you're gonna turn into one yourself. Now, Mr. Smedley. Son, you're waiting around up to your neck in a lot of manners dead folks used to use. We have our ways, and we like them. Tradition's a fine thing, but you've got to take it easy. 
It's all right for a fellow to wear one of them little white ties and tail coats if he wants to. But if he gets in a sweat and swivel about it, you know what'll happen? What? Your collar will wilt. I'm going to take a walk. Uh, maybe I'd better go along with you. No, son. You stay here and practice your golf. I'm going down yonder and take a look at that ocean. I've never seen one. <laughs> Tell me his name and I'll shoot him down like a dog. Have a jelly bean? Any varmint that'd make a pretty girl like you cry like that just don't deserve to live. What's his name? Steve. Steve Terhune. You're Debbie Smith. Don't seem possible. Old Smith ain't human enough. I bet you're Janet's grandfather, aren't you? Yep. I've heard of you. Say, why don't you and this Terhune fella just up run off and get married? Boy, when you want to talk about a subject, you really start right in the middle, don't you? Hit him in the middle smedley, that's what they always called me. <laughs> but why don't you run off? Well, I'm willing, but Steve won't. Seems to think I couldn't be happy if I left here. If he's crazy, I'd be happy any place with him. Dear me. Things around here sure need a stern up, don't they? You can say that again. Mm, it could. But it won't. You'll be hearing from me. I hope so. You know, if this was 40 years ago, I think I'd teach that young Terhune fellow a lesson myself. You know, if this was 40 years ago, I think I'd want you to. But it's kind of hard for a girl to make a paw look small in a town where he's been top dog for so long. Well, that's her side of it. I've got mine. Well, you know, sometimes folks can get together and talk it over. I'm not even allowed on the place. Yeah, fix your window, can't you? Yes, I guess so. Well, now, uh, if I break a window, I've got to pay for it. And if I've got to pay for it, I'm picking out the fellow that's going to fix it. Listen, mister. Smith runs this town. If you break his window, he'll... Wrong word, son. Broke. Half broke. He'll be along soon. I carefully asked four or five fellas where your place was so he'd know where to find me. Oh, brother. Just a sample of my kind of planning. What did I tell you? Here he comes now. Wonder who that fellow is with him. The sheriff. You'd better tell me what brand of tobacco you smoke. I'll send you a carton every week. Yeah. Out of the Arrest that man. By the powers invested me as sheriff of Honeysuckle County, I arrest you. Get out of here, you dark gun. Promise you ain't arresting nobody. Come on, come now, come on, come on. I'll have you up. If I back in Wyoming, I'll string you up. Have no argument. Get come away on, from me. I'm sorry to be late, Mr. Smith. I came over as quickly as I could. What's up? I'm placing Smith where he belongs. Sam, what did you do? Never mind what I did. I never thought I'd find you on the side of the enemy. Admiral, make the arrest. Just a moment. What's the charge? Whose lawyer are you, Adams? Well, I work for you on a yearly retainer. But when it comes to putting my family in jail, I'm on the other side of the fence. You hear that, Sheriff? There's good stuff in that boy once you scrape off the crust. Be quiet. Uh, Mr. Smith, what's the charge? Assault and battery. Well, there can hardly be assault because a man accidentally hits a golf ball too far. Oh, a man his age can't hit a ball that far. 
he used a gun of some kind. That's perfectly ridiculous. It's what he did. I saw him sighting down the barrel of it. Mr. Smith, as your attorney, I've got to warn you that a suit for false arrest can be very expensive. Well, you're not my lawyer as of this minute. Very well. I fixed that. Sheriff, you'd better get Mr. Smith to sign a complaint. Otherwise, the suit for false arrest can be directed against you. Is that okay with you, Mr. Smith? No, I'm not signing anything. Well, I can't make an arrest on a violation I didn't see, unless there is a complaint. Of course, we're perfectly willing to pay for the accident. Sure, pay for anything we break. That's me, cash on the line smuggling. Shut up. I can do that, too. Well, Mr. Smith? All right. I have a glazier, and I'll send you the bill. You will not. If I'm paying for it, I'll pick out the boy that's going to do the work. Steve, go out there and fix that window. He will not. This man is not allowed on my property. I demand that you send to Boston for a glazier. There ain't nothing in the law that says I've got to. Ain't that right, Sheriff? Uh, the man's right, Mr. Smith. He admits the damages and he's willing to pay for it. There's nothing that says Steve can't fix your window. Yes, sir. It's either that or you pay for it yourself. All right. Send him out. But you stay outside the house. Okay. I'll do the best I can that way. Come on, Sheriff. Well, I guess I'll move you along. No, no. You're coming home with me and stay there. You caused enough trouble for one day. Son, don't ever get married. If you do get married, don't have children. If you do have children, don't have grandchildren. If you do have grandchildren, disown them before they grow up and marry some cut that will misjudge you. Yes, sir, e Bob, my ginger, he talked right up to that old cuss. I want to tell you, he told old Smith just about where he could get off at. Did you, Tom? Yes, like a fool. <laughs> Boy, you're a good lawyer, and old Smith ain't the only client in the world. No, but he's the most important one in this town. That's true, Grandpa. I thought you didn't like him. I don't, but after all, I don't want to do anything to jeopardize Tom's career. Well... Done is done. Tom. Yes. I love you. Well, I love you too. But if I'd known four years ago what your family was like, I'd, I'd, I'd still have married you. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> now you see what I've done. If it hadn't been for me, you two would never. Grandpa, be quiet. Yes, do. Everybody says that to me. I wonder why. Good morning, Grandfather. I remember that you got up early. We always get up early, too, don't we, dear? Yeah, uh, nothing like it. Uh, clean, fresh morning air. Breakfast is ready. I don't want any breakfast now. I'll go and take a walk while you folks eat. Good. We'll go with you. Uh, we always go for a long walk in the morning, don't we, dear? Sure. Nothing like a clean, fresh walk. Yeah, well, I like to run a mile or so far eating my breakfast. So do we. Okay, I can see we ain't getting no breaks. We might as well go and eat. Ding dong, Easterners. I have to come all the way to Massachusetts to be told when I can get up out of bed and go out. If only you weren't such a stubborn mule. And if only you weren't such a sneaky little type. I hate this darn game. Makes me sick. What are we out here for anyway? We came out to get evidence on how far you can hit a golf ball, just in case Mr. Smith changes his mind about suing you for breaking his window. Well, what are you so dang nervous about? Well, there are a few rules. No talking on the tee, and no profanity on the golf course, or the Board of Governors will dismiss you just as quickly for that as they would if they caught you stealing. Stealing! Thunderation! The next thing I know, you'll be accusing me of smoking cigarettes. I'm going home. Oh, Sam. I'm going home. I'm a disgrace to you, stealing. Now, nobody accused you of stealing. Uh, your honor, darling.
Now, didn't she hit that pretty? But say, you shouldn't let a girl in her condition swing like that. Oh, but Janet isn't. She's not? No. Then what's she getting so darn moody with me for? You take your cut next, son. gone mad? Nope. I taught him a charity shift. He ain't got it quite right, son. You zig twice before you zag. The best shot you've ever made in your life. Oh, Sam, you have to show me how to do that. Paid for ladies for obvious reasons. Mr. Smith. Uh, Adams, uh, you don't mind letting us play through, do you? I have an important business appointment. Well, not at all, Mr. Smith. Uh, Janet and I have already hit, but you go right ahead. Uh, certainly, Mr. Smith, you go right ahead. We're in no hurry. As a matter of fact, we like to play slowly. Thank you. I don't. You don't what? I don't like to play slow. As a matter of fact, I think we'll play faster than you will. I see. I'm sorry. I didn't know there were any objections. There are. Pretty well. Uh, I must say, Adams, your choice of guest is most unfortunate. Low as our standards are, there is a limit. Mr. Smith, you must remember that you're speaking of my family. I don't like your tone, Adam. Quiet! First rule is no talking on the tea. I shall take this matter up with our Board of Governors. Just as you wish. It's obvious, Mr. Smith, what action your Board of Governors will take. Janet and I will resign whenever you wish. Son, I've been thinking it over. Since these fellows are only a twosome, we'd be holding them up all the way around. Let him go through. Smell his breath. My boy, a man don't have to be drunk to indulge in a little common courtesy. Though sometimes it helps. Just a minute there, Smith. Who spoke? You know ding dong where who spoke. Where'd you get that ball? No business of yours, it's mine. Let me see it. Tom Adams. They're so right here. Smith, looks like you're a ball thief. Uh, there must be some mistake. Think so? Son, how many balls you got in that bag? Six. There's only three, Mr. Adams. I just looked. Catch a man with a horse that ain't his, he's a horse thief. Smith here is a ball thief. It's the law of the range. There's a likely looking tree over here. Sam. All right, we won't take the law into our own hands. But you can tell this to your board of governors. Just a minute. Sam, how many balls did you accidentally hit over toward Mr. Smith's house? Ah, son, you spoiled it all. Of course, that's it. I put them in my pocket and forgot to return them to you. It's quite understandable. It's very nice of you to take it that way. Just a minute, Smith. One more. Extraordinary. Just when I had him sewed up as tight as a drum. Son, you're so pure, it's disgusting. Well, play ball. <clears throat> now can I drive? Well, you better wait. You might hit them. Well, they're on the green. No. Tom, it's 350 yards. Yeah. Even I couldn't drive that far. Cherokees never knew their own strength. Let's get out of here. We've certainly established the evidence. Come on. Hey, I thought we were going to play golf. Oh, Martha, we'll have our coffee in the living room. <laughs> coffee in the living room. I've heard of traveling to a meal, but I've never heard of traveling through it. Hey, Martha, never mind sitting at the table for breakfast. Just toss it at us as we circle around. 
Your grandfather makes funny jokes. Uh, you really think so? No. I'll get it. Hey, you know, son, you're improving every minute. Just keep it up, and the first thing you know, you'll be like me. I'd cut my throat first. Good evening, my dear. Is that really young husband of yours home? Uh, yes, won't you come in? Ah, there you are, Adams. A little problem has come up that I need your advice on. Mr. Smith, are you telling me that I still represent you? Why, of course, my boy, of course. You must have misunderstood me. A man often says in temper what he doesn't mean. <laughs> Not me. I never lose my temper. That's why they call me easygoing Smithley. Oh. Oh, <laughs> yes, that's very interesting. And now, Adams, about that... Just a moment. Yes? Don't call me Adams. My dear boy, I didn't know it offended you. Thomas? That'll be satisfactory. <laughs> Thomas, it will be. Now, about that beachfront. I've watched that. I think if we go at it right, we can get it rezoned. Thomas, my boy, it's a positive pleasure to do business with you. Uh, Mr. Smith, I do hope Grandfather's drive didn't hurt you. No, 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 of course not. Accidents will happen. Uh, by the way, that reminds me, Mr. Smedley, you must teach me how to hit a golf ball like that. All my life, I wanted to drive that first green. I won't do it. What? I won't teach this for my Cherokee shift. But uh, why not? Uh, after all, your grandson and I are business associates and we're good friends. Won't teach nobody who's standing in the way of true love. Sam, that's none of your business. Well, I'm making it my business. Why do you suppose they call me Nosey Smedley? Well, we'll just forget about that. Steve Tahoon will never marry my daughter. And you'll never drive the first green. Well, after all, he, he does have a point, Sam. Steve and Debbie do have different backgrounds. Background? I'm surprised at you. What background you got? We all lived in a shack until some crazy fool struck oil in the front yard. When the young fella's got backbone, he don't need no background. And what background have I got? I'm ashamed of myself. No, Mr. Smith, why should you be? And what background have you got? A pair of my Indian friends told me about a Jonathan Smith way back, who used to sell the tribe's wooden nutmegs. Nevertheless, Steve Tehune will never marry my daughter. Why, there's a breath of life in my body. That so? It is. <laughs> All right, bub. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to teach you to hit a golf ball. Sam, what are you up to? Nothing. Nothing at all. I'm going to teach this fellow the genuine Cherokee shift. But at my time and my place. Well, that's, uh, that's fair enough. I understand you want a little summer home on an island just off the coast. Kiwi Island. Yes, I own it. Yeah, I'll meet you there tomorrow at 2 o'clock. Oh, uh, but uh, surely the golf course is the logical place. Nope. It calls for a wiggle and a waggle, and it ain't no good in public until you get it right. You meet at my time, where I say, or not at all. Uh, well, I... Uh... Depends on how bad you want to drive that first green. Uh, <clears throat> well, I, I wanted to go out there tomorrow morning, anyhow. All right. I'll meet you there. It's a deal. Uh, I'll tell the launchman to be ready for you. You needn't bother. But how would we get out there? I'll paddle my own canoe. Granddaughter, any other rooms we need to eat in? Uh, let's go in the kitchen and have our coffee. Good. Then I'll go to bed and grab some sleep. You know, golf lessons take it out of a fellow. Kiwi Island. It shouldn't be hard to find. Good night, everybody. You know, tomorrow's going to be a mighty interesting day. doing? <laughs> I'm conjuring up a hurricane. No man can conjure up a hurricane. That's what I thought myself for one day I was out on the prairie with Singing Wolf. Biggest medicine man in the Ramapo tribe. Was ever hear of him? Can't say that I have. Ah, hey, you wish nurse. Well, sir, one day, Singing Wolf put on this dance and up come the biggest bro you ever see. Stand aside, please. I don't care how much that wolf sank. No man can conjure up a hurricane. Yeah, I don't seem to be having much success. That's because it can't be done. Yeah. Nobody can say I didn't try. And Singing Wolf told me that thing was foolproof. Why did you want a hurricane anyway? Jonathan Smith out on Kiwi Island. 
But a big storm would wash right over Kiwi. That's the idea. Jonathan himself told me he'd never let Debbie and Steve marry as long as he was alive. There's only one thing to do. You Western fellows think awfully direct. He gave me the idea himself. Blow! Ding! Don't you blow! <laughs> You're lucky it doesn't work. How come? I'd have to arrest you for manslaughter. <laughs> you couldn't prove nothing. Oh, I know something about conjuring. No! My great-great-aunt, Ezepa, on my father's side, was a witch. You don't say! Yep, lived over Salem Way. They convicted her, but at the last minute she escaped. How'd she do that? Flew right out the courthouse window. I was ordered to work outside. I wouldn't keep a dog out in a storm like this. Some guys would leave on a crack like that. Not me. You know, I think you like me just because of my television set. And now for your weather report. Uh, good evening. And uh, now for your weather report. The uh, storm I mentioned last night, uh, that's due tonight, uh, is here. Uh, the weather point uh, lies about 180 degrees off the east coast. Uh, with the intensity of a hurricane, uh, uh, well, it's in a hurry anyhow. The that storm's been switching back and forth for a week. It's going to be a beauty. Mm -hmm. Hadn't you better get started for Kiwi? Yeah, I reckon so. Sam. What did you mean about Smith's ancestor selling wooden nutmegs? Oh, it's an old Yankee trick. They used to carve them out of wood and sell them for the real thing. And if this fellow Smith ain't one of them sharp trading Yankees, I never seen one. Some storm. Ding dong, treacherous redskins. You better run along. Yeah. Look at them dark clouds up there. Hey, I knew my friends wouldn't give me a bum steer. Look, if it's going to be that rough, you better not go. You're no sailor. Hey, I ain't a going. I'm, I'm going to tell Debbie and see if they can get married. Debbie, Debbie, I got great news for you. I got. Uh, are you still here? How long does it take to fix a window? Uh, there were interruptions. Yeah. Well, I've got great news for the both of you. By tomorrow morning or late tonight, it'll be okay for you two to get married. What are you talking about? It's all fixed. And by who? <laughs> you don't believe me, do you? We don't. Hey, do you know where your father is? No. He, he took his golf clubs this morning. It was kind of secretive about where he was going. I guess he's at the club. <laughs> club my eye right this minute. He's out on Kiwi Island. Father is? What sure. Did you kill? Sure. Pretty slick, ain't it? Oh, Sam, are you sure he's there? Sure, I'm sure. I'm the gazebo who loaned him out there. You old maniac. Well, that's a fine way to talk to me. I thought you two kids would receive the good news with joy and shouting. I'll call Captain Ben and get him to go out. No, I figured that one out, too. Nobody in this town would risk their life to save old man Smith. Oh. Well, you're the most horrible, awful, savage Now, old... Debbie, hold on just a minute till you hear the whole plan. Steve's got to go out there and save him. You get it? Do you know what a hurricane is? Sure, I've been through lots of them. All you do is crawl in the hole till it blows over. But this is on water. I've been studying that. Ocean is the same as the prairie. Except for the waves. Steve will be risking his life. I know that too, honey. But that's a risk we've just got to take. Miss Debbie! Miss Debbie, your father is... We know. Sam Smedley, I'm arresting you on a charge of manslaughter. Oh, now, wait a minute. Oh, maybe he did get Dad to go out there, but he couldn't have known the storm was going to hit. Why, he started the storm. I saw him with my own eyes. Oh, no man can start a hurricane. Besides, Steve said this one's been playing around off the south coast for a week. Yeah, young sparks think you know everything. Steve went to get Captain Ben. There's an awful lot of storm out there. I called Captain Ben, Denton Perry. Not one of them would agree to put out in the storm. She would have told you. Looks like it's up to you, son. Perry agreed to lend me his boat. Well, I'm going with you. No, you're not. You're staying right here. You're not Look, going. Look, if you can go, I can go. Now, look here, honey. I don't think I remember how to turn this hurricane off. No, Debbie. Uh, that's it, son. All you've got to do is to go out there and be a hero, and we'll have a nice hot drink waiting for you when you come back. I've got news for you. I ain't got no time to hear it. You're going with me. I'll need help in the boat. Why, boy! You wouldn't want me to go out there and rob you of all your glory, would you? Mom, there's no time to argue. <laughs> and I'm going to. No, you're not just staying we right have here. No time to argue. Well, who's arguing? Jump! Hold that thing, don't that spear. What kind of a seaman do you think you are? Jump! You 
Let me go below. Below! He's too wet down there. Below! Below! Downstairs! Oh! Never, never! Somehow, you knew that storm was coming when you arranged to meet me at the island. About time somebody around here appreciated my talents. Then you, you admit it. Sure, I admit it. You gave me the idea yourself. I did? You told me that Steve couldn't marry Debbie as long as you were alive. So there was nothing else to do but kill you. Do you mean to say that you, you actually planned to, to do away with me? Don't gawk over words, Bob. What I meant to do was kill you. Pure and simple. Kill ya! That's my soul. I wouldn't do that either. What do I know about cooking on that ding dong thing? Here, take a look at this. That'll warm you up. You won't mention it to anyone, will you? You're a lulu, you are. You need a drink to save your life, and all you're thinking about is scandal. Give me that bottle. No, 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 as long as it's medicinal. How's that? <clears throat> I can't tell you. Yes. That's better. Uh, no, no, uh, don't hide it away. I, I might have a relapse. <laughs> Brother, I'll be sitting right alongside you. I should arrange a suitable. 
even generous reward for young Tihun. Yeah. There you go again. All you can think about is money. That young fella saved your life. Oh, nonsense. The, the village is full of seafaring men. I'm sure one of them would have put out to save me. Chris, you better take another drink. Why? I've got something to tell you, and you're going to need it. Oh, all right, if you insist. Well, Steve called every house in town, and not one man would put out to save your life for love nor money. You wanted everybody in this town to live the way you wanted them to. <laughs> I, uh, that was the right way to live. Brother, there ain't any one right way to live. What's right for you is wrong for me. I only did my duty. Duty. You had a fine time. You even stood in the way of your daughter marrying the fellow she was in love with because you didn't think he was as good as you are. Well, it's deep to go it. Steve Turhome was man enough to save your life with my help. Yes, that's true. Why, ding dong it. Nearly every man and woman in this town was glad to hear this. Uh, please, take it easy. Yeah. You get the idea? Yes, I get it. Storm's blowing itself out. How do you feel, Father? I got a hunch he's going to be okay. Swell. I better get up on deck. It's a wonder they ain't us already. Maybe you'll need another sub. And don't worry too much. It's never too late to change. Hey, this ding dong thing is stuck. Where are we? Just approaching the dock. Well, hand me the flashlight. Oh. Steve! Huh. He must have seasick. I'll bring her in. I'll write this bit of bear back if need be. I got her. Sam! Don't worry, honey. I saved him. How'd you ever make it over and back in this storm? Oh, a well, can do anything once he sets his mind to it. Sam Smedley, you're under arrest. Anybody who wants to arrest my old partner, Sam Smedley, has got a ding-dong work shooted out with me. It's all right, John. We'd better go up the ladder. Do you think you can make it? Why should we have to go up the ladder? Tell them to bring the dock down here. <clears throat> I'm sure glad I had time to come easy and straighten things out for you, kid. I don't know what we'd have done without you. You may think you're kidding, son, but it's a fact. I know it. Order! Get the bags. Yes. Everything all right with you two sprouts? Oh, wonderful. I wish you could stay for the wedding. Ah, it wouldn't do to have a best man who was better looking than the bridegroom. Oh, <laughs> there's the whistle. Where's Smith? Well, I don't know where he went. I reckon he's too embarrassed to come down and show me his gratitude. Oh, I've blown the whistle. Here we go. Oh, Goodbye, everybody. Advice, Sam. Be careful now. Have some. Goodbye, Sam. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, Sam. 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 Don't forget to write. Send a postcard. <laughs> Don't forget my grandchildren. Goodbye. 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 <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Dad burned if I didn't clean forget my jelly beans. Here. Have one of mine. Well, thanks. I bet the <laughs> oh, God. How are you? Where are you going? How's the housing situation out your way? If what I've got out there ain't big enough, I'll build on. Afraid you won't like it, though. Why not? I'm the head man, Prairie Falls. Folks out there jump when I speak. Oh, well, I fix that. I can do for you what you did me. <laughs> what have you got there? Licorice. Licorice? Really? I love it. May I? Perhaps, sir. Sure. Thank you. Ha, 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 ha,